Hi, yeah, I'm um, Ash Charlwood and I'm health and safety advisor to UK Athletics. Core health and safety uh, is, um, I guess, the fundamental part of how the board decides that health and safety um, works its way down um, into the sport. So, um, fundamentally, we start talking about how the general policy works out across all the different um, senior executive team members. Um, that can be looking at things like general risk assessment or policies that uh, will help the um, organisation understand what a reasonable level of health and safety management looks like. So trying not to uh, put too many handbrakes on the sport, but making sure that the, the sport is kept, kept safe at all times. Um, so part of that will be um, looking at um, accident incident reports. So making sure that as things are reported into the um, organisation through the um, in, uh, investigation sorry, uh, the insurance um, reporting um, portal that anything uh, significant or serious is dealt with um, immediately. And then also just making sure that um, anybody that's been affected by an incident gets the amount of uh, support from the home country um, that, that's sort of relevant to, to any club or uh, event activity is there. So um, that that's sort of the customer facing bit, if you like, the how the members will see or interact with health and safety. But then also looking at things like how um, in licensed events, maybe um, we need a, a set of guidance um, that ensures that uh, closed roads are well managed, that, that people don't come through on those, um, making sure that health and safety um, videos are there for um, England Athletics Club resources and the club hub part of uh, what they're doing. Um, and then also sort of supporting generally how um, health and safety relevant issues um, are dealt with by uh, both UK athletics and, and um, British athletics, but also through the um, home country. So very relevant at the moment, we've got um, items like uh, Natasha's law around um, allergens in food and what that means for clubs that provide food as part of events or activities um, right the way through to maybe British athletics who will uh, be buying um, food support in for events and then uh, keeping a watching eye on things like um, the protect the protector duty or Martin's law that um, is likely to come in next year around um, anti-terror um, arrangements for events of more than 100 people when they, they congregate. So the core safety management is really the high level view of um, health and safety for the organisation and making sure that we um, are ahead of the game, um, and, but also reacting at, at the same part. So health and safety is as much about reacting to incidents that have happened, um, but ideally getting in there first proactively and uh, making sure that all the arrangements are in place to prevent um, any harm coming to, to anybody as a part of um, UK athletics activities generally. Competition, health and safety, um, I, I guess we've got um, all sorts of things happening, um, some of which are, are part of that um, kind of coronavirus bit. So uh, over the last 18 months, I think a lot of uh, local authorities who would license events have become perhaps a little bit tighter um, on reviewing risk assessments. So they've obviously taken a massive focus on how accidents uh, or, or diseases might be spread um, through um, high volume activities. So whilst there's always been a duty to produce a risk assessment, um, local authorities are perhaps being a little bit more diligent about that and, and perhaps in, in some cases um, asking some fairly awkward questions. So um, I would get involved with helping um, review risk assessments that are coming in, supporting event um, license holders to make sure that their documentation is, is at the right level. So that starts from producing 
templates and guidance around specific areas supporting again HCAFs who are licensing events and, and perhaps run Britain who would be licensing events to make sure that the guidance that we're giving uh, out is fit for purpose and will support participation in the sport on the on the um, event side of things and that that kind of competitions piece also kind of spans across um, I guess more than than just um, what we might immediately think of so we're talking about things like the uh, trail running association fell running association both of whom are affiliated to uk athletics and benefit from uk athletics insurance so we want to make sure that again the guidance that we produce is there for um every type of participation in the sport um so it doesn't matter whether it's a a, a simple club activity with with 20 runners or right the way through to you know massive participation events um we're trying to make sure that the health and safety process isn't um too onerous but making sure that um events uh, are, are producing the right documentation and able to demonstrate to um, other kind of stakeholders in the in the places that those events are happening that they're, they're taking all the reasonable um activities there so whether it's um the Greenwich 5k and 10k runs whether it's talking about um supporting um other, other event um guidance bits so you know questions coming in about um quite a serious incidents actually you know we've had we've had a couple of um sad incidents and and how those uh people are supported around that often comes um through me supporting some of the other um officers in in hcafs and uk athletics to, to make sure that the um all of those interests are, are supported on the ground I mean, again, um, a lot of the, the starters um, we're seeing, um, again, cross country being um, part of, a, a, you know, a massive change, I guess, as, uh, as the winter came last year with the uh, coronavirus. Um, some of the things around the, the guidance that sit around providing food, um, temporary demountable structures. So we uh, perhaps call them marquees more normally in the sport, but we've had um, instances where um, uh, marquees at finish lines haven't perhaps been secured in the right way. So making sure that uh, everyone understands how those things uh, need to be managed, but then also providing information externally so that we can take those learning experiences out and, and dealing with those in a, in a wider context. And I think probably one of the biggest things from the off track um, side is perhaps uh, first aid management um, for event providers um, and um, generally kind of clubs. Obviously, we've got much greater awareness now of um, how much pressure the NHS is under. So those um, providers that need to be there um, have to be kind of managed in a, an appropriate standard. So working to make sure, again, that those, um, those bits of guidance are there, that the um, both clubs and event providers are um, really aware of what uh, a good practice standard is and uh, what, what that kind of means to them. Coaching uh, process at the moment is going through a, a series of um, technical advisory groups. So we had a brilliant meeting about a fortnight ago um, with um, some uh, very experienced coaches and athletes looking at the guidance that we um, have in place and how that maps onto the coaching qualifications from a safety perspective. So we're actually in the process of totally reviewing the uh, the kind of UK athletics risk assessment that sits behind coaching and making sure that we've not got any gaps. So one of the obvious things that um, came up maybe about three months ago is that obviously there's lots of folk um, running with buggies. Um, UK athletics haven't uh, to date had any specific guddy, uh, buggy guidance. So England, Scotland, Ireland and Wales have had um, differing uh, bits of guidance. So we've been pulling those together to ensure that uh, we can produce 
really helpful guidance to um, make sure that people leading sessions that involves buggies know um, the key things to look out for. So the health of the mother, the health of the baby, um, and then around equipment as well. So um, that that's just one example, but obviously we're trying to put that across um, all the, the track events, so uh, throws, jumps, uh, running, endurance, um, into road running, also involving um, trail running, mountain running, um, how the whole kind of coaching um, structure looks. So, you know, my role is, is very much about supporting uh, Georgina in the, in the kind of qualifications area to make sure that we've identified any gaps that, that are there uh, and also to make sure that some of these um, pieces of guidance that are in place for, for many, many years are still relevant. So a classic example, again, would be in high jumps. Um, so in the last couple of years, we've seen much more use of um, elasticated bars. Uh, and that means that the supports need to be oriented differently and, and venues will be presenting their equipment differently. So again, making sure that the guidance that we have in place um, for coaches is, um, is relevant and current and proportionate for the things that they're managing. So th those kind of things tend to take uh, a fair amount of time um, so sort of harvesting the information from um, very enthusiastic and knowledgeable people, uh, bringing it centrally into a format that is easy and consistent to understand. So irrespective of how a leader or a coach is um, accessing the information, the safety critical information, the, the way it's presented is always the same. So, you know, hopefully in the first quarter of 2022, um, that work will be complete and there'll be a, a, a new range of, of guidance that sits um, behind the coach qualifications and helps the, the review of the learning development process that, um, that the coaching department's doing uh, moving forwards. Health and safety at facilities is again um, about supporting venues to ensure that they're hitting the expected standards. Obviously, we've had track mark rollout um, uh, a couple of years ago now, and in that, um, got lots of things happening around. Um, Maybe throws cages and uh, lighting standards that, uh, that that are now part of track mark um, and with all of these changes obviously um, there's a there's a period from where we start now to, to where we want to end up being and again the focus working with um, Ed from a facility standpoint is very much about making sure that the opportunities to participate are still there um, helping facilities deal with um, issues that are coming up around changing standards so we've got um, items around you know, world athletics are changing uh, wind load ratings on cages alongside um, the the improvements that we've made on um, throw cage inspection and testing over the over the last 18 months um, uh, and again you know then then also coming into how um, specific facilities like um, uh, tracks may be used for race walking and, and off uh, track race walking and how those two integrate. So we talk very much about um, facilities being um, the, the, the track activities only, but of course, um, how they are then used for uh, club activities, how they how clubs should expect them to be managed when we've got multi-user arrangements, um, perhaps some conflicts taking place with um, those using the infield during club training sessions. So again, how uh, the whole facilities piece fits within uh, both uh, competition, but also coaching and, and, uh, and club environments is really important. So uh, again, sometimes digging quite deep into um, site specific arrangements. So I might be downloading Strava heat maps or looking at ordnance survey maps for how we're looking at developing throws areas. Um, and again, um, from, a, from a race walking context, whether things are still um, uh, relevant to, to them when track activity has always been based on running. Uh, and I guess the other, the other big thing that's happened in the last six months is obviously facility providers are under a huge amount of um, 
kind of economic strain. Um, COVID has, has, has caused a, a lot of issues for them. So again, as they're um, reopening facilities or looking at change of use, how um, those spaces can, can accommodate both um, the normal kind of kind of athletics um, activities, but but also perhaps how um, shared use can be taken forward, and, and sometimes that that can create some challenges for us. Um, you know, indoor spaces, particularly at the moment, um, very attractive for uh, facility operators to spread their gym equipment out into. Um, and that obviously has safety impacts where we might see reduction in uh, lane use indoors um, or or the margin areas how you how clubs would ordinarily manage um, a safe activity so so those things um, will come uh, across kind of health and safety's uh, desk to, to kind of look at and support and perhaps take some pragmatic stands on uh, what can and can't be achieved in that space and um, again supporting all the stakeholders to to make sure that athletics um, doesn't get a, a bad trot of uh, things that are, are changed, but but also to to make sure that the facilities are a, a, a really good standard for our athletes and, and competitions going forward.